All right, I am revisiting the retouching technique that I explored earlier in another video simply because I'm trying to work on my aspect ratios to get my videos to come out much sharper. And being the perfectionist that I am, I'm not stopping until I do so. Um, if you're a member of the Atelier's Lounge, you have a copy of this image to work on for yourself. Um, basically, I'm using an older technique that plays upon dodge and burn methods. Uh, the good people at Adobe have uh, created tools now that have simplified this, but I think it's good to learn how to do this too. And often I go back to this method because you can get a lot of precise control and I'm a little bit uh, anal retentive with my work, so I like everything perfect, <laughs> so to speak. Um, I have the image opened, regular background. I'm going to duplicate that and rename this one working image. Click OK. And then I have my toolbars off the main thing. I'll move them on to show you selections. But the next thing I'm going to do is go up to layer. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer on curves. It's going to be curves one. I'm going to keep it that name. No need to change it. Um, next thing I'm going to do is lighten my curves here. Bring it up until I'm happy. I want to make it more of a arch there. I like it like that. So I can close that out. Next thing I need to do is my mask right now is white. I need this to be filled black so it's off. Right now it's on. Um, and to do that, real simple. Let me bring this toolbar over. I'm going to select a black swatch square, my paint bucket, and I'm going to fill right on the image. So you notice the image is brought back to somewhat of its normal color and this is now black, the mask area. Select that again. I'm going up to layer again. I'm going to create another new adjustment layer on curves and I'm going to keep it curves too. I'm not going to change that. Only this time I'm going to make it dark. And then I can close that. And you notice this is white. I want it filled black again, so make sure it's on black. Grab your paint bucket. Fill it. So now it's back to a normal color. Um, I'm not done yet. I'm going to select that. I'm going to create another new layer. And I'm going to label it black and white. And I'm going to take my paint bucket, make sure it's black again, and I'm going to fill it so it's all black. I'm going to go to my mode and change it to color so my image is in black and white. Some people like to do this, some don't really care, but for me, um, I like to eliminate the color palette and the colors in the image, I should say, because I feel when I work black and white, I can see more of the imperfections and I'm not distracted by all the colors that are going on. And if you're working with people that have makeup on, um, it helps. So I'm going to blow, scroll in, blow up her face so we can see. We'll start with this line here. I'm going to grab my paintbrush. I'm going to make sure this is on white. I'm going to make sure I'm on my curves one. Um, my opacity, if you noticed, is at 11%. Uh, my brush size, I'm going to bump down to a three because uh, I'm going to blow this up. Generally, when I'm retouching like this, I like to work at 800 or bigger. Um, I'm on my normal laptop computer right now doing this work, but when I'm in my studio, I use a large screen TV so I can uh, really, really see up close and blow everything up. Um, I'm going to grab my brush, make sure I'm on white. <sighs> Curves 1 paints over black. Dark areas, shadow areas, curves too, paints over the white um, or light areas. It's you know basic dodge and burn. So with my paintbrush, I'm going to select this dark crease right here, and you notice the mid tones. Uh, you are evening out 
the flesh on the model's face here. So you can kind of see, go into two, and I'm going to simplify. Now, as I was saying, there is easier ways to do this now that are quicker and more efficient when you're working on a lot of images at once if you're if you've done some session work however if you're doing any kind of retouching for magazine or whatnot you want to be as perfect and as precise as you can be or at least that's how I am about it um, that's too light that's too light and obviously with this method it can take anywhere from three to six hours or more just to get perfection so to speak I'm not going to bore you, bore you with sitting here and doing that for that long So now if I scroll out, this is the area I've been working on. If I turn it off, you can see that line is slowly disappearing. Off, on, off, on. Um, just to kind of give you an idea. I'll work a little bit bigger here so you can kind of see you don't have to work as close to or blown up as I do I just that's just how I like to do it oops wrong one haha Again, if I was doing this for real, for a real job, I would go in and do all the dark areas first, and then I would switch over and then do all the light areas, and then I would go back and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until I got it the way I wanted to get it. So if we scroll out, take the black layer off there, you can kind of see now how that's working. And eventually we would go in and do the entire face like that. So imagine me having gone in and done all of that. Um, the next video I'm going to show is a method that's just like this, but with a special tool Photoshop has in the more current um, versions that actually eliminates all the need for curves and masking and whatnot. So look forward to that. Thanks.